It's a good Ag AM in Kansas morning. Good morning. Let's take a look and see what's coming up today. First, learn more about the details concerning the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Then K-State's Dr. Chris Blevins and Patty Stalder with the Kansas Horse Council discuss what's coming up for Equifest in 2016. Next, see how soil does much more than just help us grow food. See how it helps create many of the products we use every day. And Mark Pettijohn updates us on his entry in the Sorghum Yield Contest. We'll end with a word about PEDV research from Jason Woodworth. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. So the agreement has been reached by the negotiating parties. And so the next step is the president is going to go to Congress and tell Congress basically that he intends to sign the agreement. And as soon as that intention is communicated to Congress, Congress has 90 days to make a decision and vote up and down. The real essence of the TPP to American agricultural trade and trade in general is very little. We have all the major agricultural trading uh, countries, all the countries that actually have the potential to add significantly to our agricultural trade and another trade, uh, are already in agreement with us in different areas. The, the fundamental reason why we have to be at this table it's a group of countries that have come together to recognize the threat of China uh, in the global economic environment to create a block that can resist China's move. Uh, and so, you know, as much as people talk about it from the perspective of trade, I see it more from the perspective of a strategic positioning uh, to resist the rapid growth that we are seeing in China in the global economic environment. If China can position itself such that its currency becomes the, the currency of trade instead of the U.S. dollar, that changes the whole story. Uh, I think that it is extremely important for us to focus on the economic power that we need to exert if we are going to maintain the U.S. currency as a reserve currency. And for me, that is the essence of the TPP. Right now, the U.S. borrows from the world in U.S. dollars. Okay, so when, when people buy our treasuries, they are buying it in U.S. dollars. So the exchange rate is irrelevant. Now, suppose we go and borrow in Chinese renminbis. All of a sudden, exchange rate becomes a problem when we are talking about national debt. Okay, so there's a real important reason why we have to maintain the U.S. dollars as a reserve currency for global trade. So not only are we going to be buying products in Chinese currency, if China becomes the dominant economic force uh, and all intents and purposes, they've started their own competition to the World Bank and, uh, and that has been joined by some of our partners in Europe. So when you think about it that way, if the yuan or the renminbi becomes a currency, it has significant implications across board, including our national monetary policy. You know, having said that trade is not, you know, is not the biggest part of this, it's still a component of it. For example, you know, we're going to see 50% reduction in tariffs on beef, which is great for us because that immediately creates a pool, new markets for our beef processors. If they can get markets in, the, in this environment, it allows us to sell more cattle, right? We are going to see about 388% decrease in pork tariffs. Okay, uh, we are going to see about 31 uh, percent decrease on wheat tariffs. Okay, so when you when you take all those, uh, despite the big picture of you know maintaining our national leadership uh, as a global force, uh, the benefits to us at the at the mi micro level of agriculture is still very real because in the long run, um, it's that performance that allows us to maintain our sales in U.S. dollars and therefore take the risk of currency out. Mm -hmm. Our farmers don't have to worry about currency risks when, when we are trading because everybody is purchasing in U.S. dollars.
Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, heinenbrothersag.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Hello and welcome to Horsing Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center. Today, joined by Patty Stalder. Hi, Chris. Patty is a director of the Kansas Horse Council here in Kansas. Mm -hmm. Does great things. We have great things that happen through the Kansas Horse Council, making sure people know about it in the horse industry in, in this area. And, you know, we have the Horse Care 101 seminar, but also you guys have Equifest, <laughs> which everybody always is looking forward to, usually in February. Mm -hmm. And so, Patty, when is it and where is okay. it? Okay, when is it is easy. February 26th, 27th, and 28th, the last weekend in February. A little bit later than in, in the past years, so the last weekend in February. But the big thing to remember is it is no longer in Wichita. We are very, very happy to have our new home at the Kansas Expo Center in Topeka. Okay, so if you're going to head to Wichita, you're heading <laughs> in the wrong location <laughs> this year. So it is in Topeka yeah, at this the year at, at the Expo Center, mm -hmm. which is a great venue to be at. Mm -hmm. Most people kind of know where that's at. Mm -hmm. However, if they don't or want to get more information, mm -hmm. where would they get some information about, about Equifest? Everything you need to know is on their website. Uh, it's equifestofks.com. Okay. Equifestofks.com. All right, so they have their own website to mm -hmm. go through the information. I guess, what are some kind of the, the sneak peeks of who's going to be there mm -hmm. clinician-wise mm -hmm. and maybe some other events that are going to be going on okay. this year at Equifest. Well, one of our headliners is Dan James. He's an Australian with Double Dan Horsemanship. Now, this is the first time we've had him here, so we're really tickled about that. We're also having Sharon Camarillo back, barrel racer. She's been with us before and very popular. And um, Tim Quay, who's the National Reining Horse Association uh, champion. So, and there's others. Um, there's a long list. They're all on the website. But um, those are the top three headliners right now. That is great. And what else is uh, going to be going on other than the clinicians and them listening and learning from these and these different uh, mm -hmm. demos? What else is going on there at Equifest this year? Well, we do, we'll have our ranch rodeo. We have to have that. It'll yeah. be Saturday night and Sunday afternoon. We also have a whole new area that we can use because we're at the Expo Center. And so some of those other spaces, additional spaces, will be used for art exhibit, an art show, equine art show, wow. looking at a fashion show. And of course, we'll have our um, educational seminar area. So we'll have different spaces, additional spaces, and of course, you know, 150 vendors or more. Um, and really cool this year is food trucks. We're gonna have a variety of food, um, no longer standing in long lines. We'll have lots of uh, concessions inside, but also food trucks outside. That is gonna be cool. neat. Uh, you know, I think that that's something that, uh, if you haven't been to Equifest in the past, it's always a neat atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You always take away something and even products yes, yeah, <laughs> while definitely. you're there with all the vendors, but it's just a great, great place for kids, uh, adults alike, mm -hmm. uh, there's stuff to do for everybody. So mm -hmm. always encourage people, if you haven't been to Equifest, yes. sure make sure you make it. And if it's a little further away in Wichita, don't have an excuse because <laughs> now right. we're in Topeka. That's so that's right. going to be really great. Uh, and then, yeah, again, don't forget, let's give them that website again that mm -hmm. they can go to and, and uh, that should work. Equifestofks.com. All right. Well, there you have it. Thank you, Patty, well, thank for your you, help Chris. today. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Health Center and we'll see you around. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. 
This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Fall is a great time to plant trees, shrubs, and perennials. Root development this fall means more growth with less watering next year. For faster root growth, always use Fertilome Root Stimulator. It is the only stimulator which contains IBA rooting hormone. Use Fertilome tree and shrub food after the plant has been planted for a month. Save 25% now on Jackson's homegrown hardy perennials. Let Jackson's friendly staff help you select the best plants for your landscape. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Well, there are two main components of soil that really are the, supply the benefits that plants need to be able to grow, and that would be the soil organic matter. But in, in addition to that, it's dominantly uh, clay minerals, uh, the minerals that occur in the clay fraction and the clay particle size, they're largely the, the minerals that supply the ability of, of soils to retain nutrients that plants use. I have a soil sample here that is a, it's high in clay. It actually has a texture that we would call a silty clay. It has a texture that is, occurs in many of our subsoils in Kansas. It's around 40 to 45 percent clay, but one property of many of our uh, uh, soils in Kansas with a high clay content is a plasticity to it. And you can see how I can just rub this between my thumb and forefingers and it forms a very long ribbon. That indicates that it's a sample that's very high in clay and it's also a type clay that has a lot of plasticity to it. The uh, American Indians, they had known deposits uh, that they would go to to be able to dig out and mine. Uh, some areas where uh, the, the clay was concentrated in the soil. This is dominantly the clay that's of uh, the mineral that's called keolinite that they would use to make pottery. There are different qualities of clay. And so, you know, typically it was based on geography and what you had access to. Different regions have different materials. I went to Italy. The clay there was green when I was using it, but it fires terracotta. And it's all about the iron content and sort of, you know, how long it's been decomposing. And, you know, there's countless additives and different sort of additions and subtractions you can make to your clay body. There's endless possibilities. We work with a periodic table of, ed of elements to compose glazes and to compo compose clay bodies and so you know we are we are scientists we maybe don't go as in depth as understanding all of the different things but we are balancing equations and calculating to make sure that we have what we need to make the right melts or to make the right color happen Hello, I'm Dr. Frank Lyons from Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center here in Manhattan, Kansas. Daryl was one of our patients that we did about seven months ago. I dug trees by hand for years and years and years. In the process, I wore out my rotary cuff. But when I learned about this process, I thought if there's a way to get rid of this pain, then I, then I want to do it. So we did it and it worked. I'm not going to go out and dig trees with a shovel anymore, but, but I can do the things that I want to do now. Well, it's been very gratifying to help people with their painful joints and other uh, entities, and it's been especially gratifying to be able to help people who I know 
and have worked with and known for many years. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. This segment brought to you by Heinen Brothers Ag. Farmers helping farmers by offering quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia. Call today to protect your crop yield. Hi, I'm Ken Bowl uh, with NRCS. A lot of times they'll, they'll call us with a resource concern, whether it be uh, soil erosion or out in a pasture with brush or needing better grazing management or additional water. And uh, with the soil erosion, a lot of times just doing no-till will take care of a lot of the sheet and rill erosion. Yeah, this field's flat, so we're not worried about the, the gully erosion, but on the steeper soils, we would have a gully erosion where, we, where a technician would, would go out and uh, we'd make a plan. And, and usually a lot of times we'll put in terraces and waterways. We used to do a lot of those anymore. We're doing quite a few, but not as many as we used to. We're getting pretty good coverage in the counties. And I was helping out one of the producers here in the, on the county line between Saline and Dickinson County with a uh, sorghum yield contest. Hi, I'm Mark Pettijohn with Kansas Jag Limited. We're standing in one of my sorghum fields that did have a little bit of aphid damage, but nothing beyond the threshold. A little bit of headworms. Uh, we did not spray for either. Uh, this field was planted June 3rd with uh, Pioneer brand 84G62. It was fertilized at that time with a 12, 20, a little bit of sulfur, a little bit of zinc starter fertilizer. Um, it was also side dressed with a rolling applicator uh, on June 11th after it was newly emerged. And what's interesting is it's actually out yielding the other half of the field that was strip-tilled and fertilized March 1st. The chemical program here was done in two split applications, the first being April 15th. It was 1.25 quarts of Lumax, and the other was the day of planting, which was June 3rd, also 1.25 quarts of Lumax following the planting. Um, this field was this year's in obviously sorghum, Last year it was planted to corn and then it was overflown with a uh, cover crop uh, about the time right before corn was harvested and there was a, a nice cover crop out here that was uh, got a foot or two tall and then froze out when winter came. And uh, so that's a great way to get good residue in the an organic matter in the soil. Last year we won the state no-till contest with 155 and I think that's about what this field should do this year. I'm, uh, the red milo is doing better than the yellow milo and I'm pretty optimistic. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. No matter where, 
No matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. We've been studying uh, the porcine epidemic di diarrhea virus uh, for almost two years right now. PED is one of the, the few viruses that's been known to, to use feed or feed ingredients as a vehicle for transmission, uh, whether within barns or across barns or through a feed mill. And so the importance of feed biosecurity and feed mill biosecurity is of uh, extreme importance for us. And so we've conducted a series of studies at K-State, uh, all of them funded by the National Port Boards. The first study that we did, we, we determined the minimum infectious dose of PED that can be carried in a feed matrix. Now it's important to know the amount of PED that can be carried within a feed and still make pigs sick. And the really shocking finding from that study was that uh, one gram of feces from an infected or PED infected pig was enough to infect 500 tons of manufactured feed and then be able to make uh, any pig that consume that feed sick. And so that's a, a really small amount of fecal material that can infect feed. After that, we've conducted a couple studies looking at the pellet mill to be able to reduce or mitigate PED risk. And we've found that uh, as long as we're able to pellet feed at at least 130 degrees, uh, we can minimize the risk of PED transfer or min uh, minimize the risk of PED infectivity in the pigs. And that's really important because uh, pellet mill is a common piece of equipment found in a lot of different feed mills and speci specifically commercial feed mills. And so by being able to use pelleting technology, they can quickly uh, implement a uh, mitigation strategy to help minimize again the risk of PED transfer. A lot of the work that we did uh, was only able to happen because of the uh, Cargill uh, Feed Safety uh, Research Center there that's in our new feed mill here at K-State. And that facility is uh, basically a four-story BSL level two facility where we can go in and actually inoculate feed with PED virus, but be able to have it all contained and have a decontamination uh, program in place where we can kill that virus and basically have zero risk after the study's done of having it out, um, accidentally transferred to any of the pigs around the area. If it was not for that facility that we have here at K-State, uh, we would not have been able to do this, uh, this research. It's the only facility like that in the world where this research can be done. And there's the equipment that's inside is very similar to that that you'd find in the commercial mill. And so it has direct application then to what we can, uh, what we can do out in the swine industry. We've done some other studies where we've looked at feed sequencing as a way to minimize the cross-contamination risk uh, with PED if it's inoculated or if it's introduced into a feed mill. And indeed, uh, feed sequencing through the feed mill uh, is an important step to be able to prevent the contamination or the cross-contamination and be able to help uh, better control or minimize the risk of PED-infected feed being transferred to the high-risk portions of our production systems, such as the sow feed or the first uh, nursery pig feeds. The subsequent studies that we're doing right now, we're following up on uh, potential feed additives or chemical uh, treatments that can be used as ways to kill the virus while it's in the feed. We've really focused that area because of the strong grain science and feed science program that we have here at Kansas State University, as well as the, uh, the strong uh, swine nutrition program right here. So uh, marrying both programs together, also working with partners in the, uh, the K-State Vet Diagnostic Lab, the Iowa State University Vet Diagnostic Lab, we've been able to form a, a really strong team on PED uh, infectivity and its association with feed and feed ingredients. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.
to see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.